Hello, my name is Bill Reimer, and I'm here for the Regent Bookstore Pick of the Day. I have a colleague that tells me my Pick of the Day gets longer and longer in terms of numbers with the telling. And uh, so today, uh, take your pick. We've been off uh, food shopping today, and uh, here's some of the results and uh, we survived. Uh, who would have thought that uh, grocery shopping can become a dangerous activity uh, or, or so they tell us but uh, we are careful and uh, we are restocked. But as we get older uh, I've come to a recognition that uh, for too long I didn't enter into the activity of spiritual reading, uh, spiritual theology, or devotional writing, uh, one could call it. One key influence in my life has been uh, Professor James Houston, who uh, started out as a geographer at the University of Oxford in the late 40s and in the 50s and through most of the 60s. Uh, he was a geographer and an intellectual historian. But uh, in 1969, fortunately for us, he came to Regent College to help with the founding of it and uh, has been here ever since. Uh, he's now 98 years old and uh, still going strong. But when he arrived at Regent, uh, he sought to introduce the subject of spiritual theology. And that's been a staple throughout the history of the college. Uh, and Jim thought he would develop a series of texts uh, for his classes on the topic. And uh, they are entitled uh, The Classics of Faith and Devotion. This is an early edition of the Religious Affections by Jonathan Edwards in the series. And uh, it came out beginning in about 1982, I believe, and went out of print a couple of times, had several iterations, and uh, finally, uh, and fortunately for us, uh, it arrived at Regent College Bookstore, and we've been publishing them in paperback form uh, for the last good number of years now. And there are 10 volumes to the series, and we will list them at the end, and you can buy them on our aerial fulfillment site. But in this uh, volume, Religious Affections, uh, Jim has included an appendix entitled A Guide to Devotional Reading. And uh, I'm going to briefly read from that. And uh, you can see, it can strike you, uh, the importance of uh, spiritual uh, theology and devotional reading. And so I'll pick up... Uh, a couple points uh, in this appendix. Christian devotional reading helps us find intimate union with God. What is its motivation? To love God with all our heart, mind, and will. The writer of Ecclesiastes realized that God set eternity within our hearts. Augustine saw that God made man for himself, and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in him. This eternal yearning forms the basis of devotion. We reflect and we begin to see that the deepest form of nostalgia, to be loved or to be understood, or to be reunited with the infinite beyond all the universe, is no neurotic fancy, according to St. C.S. Lewis. Rather, it is the truest index of our real situation, to quote Lewis. In Christ, we also discover that it is not God's personhood that is vague and intangible. It is our own personalities which are incoherent, bitty, and inadequate. So the reality of prayer in the name of Jesus is the search for a fuller, richer personality the personality we most deeply long to have. In this light, we see devotional reading 
not just as a pious option to reading a good thriller or even a serious work. It is more in the nature of an awakening, as the prodigal son had at the swine trough. Our animal existence is simply not good enough when we discover inwardly that we have a royal father and that we are made in the image and likeness of God. The reading habits of the swine trough cannot ever satisfy a son and a swine at the same time. The reading habits of the hired servants, guided by the mesmerization with how-to books, which define life by action and by acceptance by self-achievement, will not do either. For a beloved son or daughter, though a prodigal, responds to his or her acceptance in Christ. It is all we can ever do, and it is more like lovers holding hands than corporate business folk making decisions in the boardroom. Indeed, we find that life consists of a number of progressive awakenings. When we first study seriously, we are excited by the awakening of our mind's activity to reasoning and, and understanding in our world. We awaken again in the experience of taking responsibility for our lives when we have to be decisive about major acts or decisions. We awaken also when we are acted upon in suffering. For pain is a great awakener to realities that had previously slumbered in our lives. But it is awakening to the love of God which transcends all other forms of human consciousness. So that's just a little introduction to the series, uh, Classics of Faith and Devotion. There are 10 volumes. Uh, I'm currently reading The Love of God and Spiritual Friendship uh, by Bernard of Clairvaux and uh, two of his friends. Uh, and I'm reading it aloud uh, because I find that reading aloud uh, allows the mind to enter into these so very important texts. And they're old texts, and so it's a little slower going, and the mind can, at least my mind, can go in multi-directions. And um, uh, reading aloud is a way of focusing and uh, concentrating so that uh, God can speak to us through these ancient texts, and uh, I commend them. Uh, they are on our Aereo site, and uh, along with, uh, there's, there's several series, obviously, of uh, spiritual theology. Uh, there's the Image Classics. Um, this is the autobiography of St. Teresa of Lisieux and uh, Interior Castle by Teresa Avila. Uh, there, and there are also the uh, classics of Western spirituality. This is a, a beat up one of William Law, and uh, it's edited by Paul Stanwood, uh, a retired professor that I know over at uh, UBC. And uh, again, all of them are available on our Aereo site. Uh, in these days, they very much uh, help us as a bricks and mortar store, uh, and I Given all the uh, turmoil now in the retail world, I think they will help us in the future as well. So if you could consider us when you go to uh, Regent Bookstore, when you go to make a book purchase, and we also have, of course, Regent Audio, and you can check that out at regentaudio.com, and it really does help keep us afloat. So bye for now and uh, see you soon.